So what are the goals if we are considering surgery? Goals of corrective osteotomy. Of course, we need to restore the articular congruity. That means get back to all the uh, anatomical, radiological parameters that we just spoke about. So articular congruity of both, that is the radiocarpal as well as the radial radial nerve joint. We need to look into both of these and effectively get back this to normal. Correct the radial height, tilt and inclination and align the carpus to the radius shaft. That's what I was talking about. If the ERLF, the effective radial lunate flexion angle is already changed, that means if you do a corrective osteotomy, then the lunate will no more be in alignment with the distal radius and uh, that will not be a good outcome for the patient. So these are the goals of any of the corrective osteotomy that we are going to do. Of course, there are two ways. Like any other bone, we can do an opening wedge osteotomy or a closing wedge osteotomy. Both were done, but now what has been proved is that the uh, opening wedge osteotomy is much, much better than a closing wedge osteotomy. Why? Because mind you, whenever we do a closing wedge osteotomy anywhere in the body, a closing wedge osteotomy reduces the bone length and opening wedge osteotomy increases the bone length, right? So when you're doing a closing wedge osteotomy and especially in distal radius, we may end up with a positive ulnar variance because the radius becomes short. That means automatically the ulna becomes longer and we end up with a positive ulnar variance and hence we may require an ulnar shortening procedure also. Now, I'm not telling a closing wedge is bad, but if you're doing that, then we need to be prepared of doing an ulnar shortening osteotomy also, like what we see over here. Ulnar also is tackled to shorten this so that the variance is taken care of. Whereas when you do an opening wedge osteotomy, almost in all cases, the DRG will be maintained and nothing needs to be done for the ulnar.